For years, cryptozoologists have sought to find evidence of unknown animals through photos, videos, audio recordings, and even physical specimens, all in an effort to prove their existence. But sometimes, this evidence, which could be enough to prove the existence of these cryptids, is lost. Welcome to the Cryptid Lost Media Iceberg. In 1896, a large bird or flying reptile was reportedly shot and photographed in Arizona. A sample of the creature was also allegedly taken and sent in for research. Neither the sample or the photograph has ever surfaced, although many people claim to have seen the photo. I've already made a couple of videos on the Thunderbird photo, so if you want to learn more, I'll link those down in the description. I also recommend following the Thunderbird photograph. It's a website and YouTube page that's extensively researched the history of the Thunderbird photograph and Thunderbirds in general. The Andean wolf is a cryptid allegedly native to Argentina. We know about the wolf from a pelt that German zookeeper Lorenz Hagenbeck bought in 1927. The seller claimed it belonged to a rare species of wolf that was larger than the native maned wolf, had darker fur, and shorter ears. Twenty years later, cryptid investigator Ingo Crumbeagle theorized that a skull he found in the region also belonged to the Andean wolf. The skull was much larger than a maned wolf skull, and found in an area that the wolves weren't native to. After that, info dries up completely. While some zoologists who examined the pelt claimed it was from a dog, today the pelt is too contaminated to do further testing. The skull disappeared sometime during the Second World War, and there are allegedly two other pelts that are lost as well. One of the more famous lake cryptids, Champ is a creature located in Lake Champlain. In 2005, two men, Dick Folter and his stepson Pete Baudet, allegedly recorded the creature from their boat. Parts of this video can be seen in an ABC News broadcast, however the full video was never released online. Some claim to have seen the full footage, which is allegedly much more convincing than the footage shown in the ABC program. Some reports of the full video describe it as showing Champ having much more detailed skin, and being larger and more turtle-like in appearance. The video is currently being held by a copyright lawyer in New Jersey who hasn't released it, allegedly because of monetary reasons. According to the Daily Times of Woodbury, a local New Jersey newspaper, a Jersey Devil was shot and photographed back in 1925. The article states a farmer was chasing a strange creature that was stealing his chickens before he shot it. The creature was described as about the size of an Airedale dog. It had black crinkly hair. On its hind feet, it had four webbed toes. It didn't run like a dog, but hopped more like a kangaroo. Its front quarters are higher than its hind, which crouched as it ran. Its rear teeth are prong-like, the upper ones fitting into the center of four prong lower ones. Its eyes are still a bright yellow, and its jaw is unlike a dog, wolf, or coyote. Despite showing the photograph to hundreds of people, nobody could conclusively identify it. The article ends with a paper stating, Anyone certain of the way a Jersey Devil looks is requested to view the beast and report. Sometime after this article was written, however, the photograph went missing. The Deloise ape photo, while now usually considered a hoax or misidentification, may not have been the only photo taken of the ape. A second photo showing the ape next to two men for scale reportedly exists, and was even allegedly published in an old book. However, there's very little information on the photo. The beast of Javodan was a strange animal that was responsible for dozens or hundreds of deaths in France in the 1700s. After it was finally killed by hunters, it was stuffed by a surgeon. In the centuries after the initial attacks, there have been many theories as to what the beast was, as it was never positively identified. Some of the theories are that it was a large dog, a wolf, a lion, or an unknown new species. 
Unfortunately, the stuffed beast went missing. Without it, we can't conclusively know what the beast was. In August 1912, Daniel Miller and Harry Taylor were fishing in the Delaware River when they caught and were attacked by what's described as a cross between a Jersey Devil and an alligator. While Taylor struggled to keep the boat from capsizing from the beast's massive weight, Miller fist fought with the creature. Eventually, Taylor joined in, and they killed the beast. They measured it at 5 feet and 4 inches in length, or 162 centimeters. Local fishermen didn't recognize the creature as any type of native fish, and alligators aren't native to the river. Some of the fishermen thought the creature was some sort of older lizard, while others claimed it was the Jersey Devil. The creature was displayed for a few days before being sent to Washington, D.C. for research. Whether or not the creature was an out-of-place alligator or a new species entirely is unknown, as sometime after the article was written, the specimen disappeared. The Loch Ness Monster, Turkish Sky. A fabled monster from the depths apparently captured on video. A swift-swimming beastie estimated... In 1968, a Spanish farmer reportedly saw strange aliens running towards their ship. These creatures were dubbed the alien octopoids. While there's no photos of the octopoids themselves, there are reportedly photos of the strange, distinctive singe marks left by their ship. These photos were taken and supposedly published by an Austrian man named Hans Volkert. However, currently we don't know where they are. The UFO the octopoids came in was described as being very odd in shape, looking like a half-watermelon as the farmer described it. There were supposedly multiple older singe marks in the same area, suggesting the craft had visited multiple times. Whether or not Hans photographed these different marks is unknown. In 1965, Loch Ness Monster researcher Ted Holliday learned of two mysterious videos from a man named Alistair Dallas. These videos were said to have been taken by a man named Dr. McRae back in the 1930s. The first film was taken in Loch Ness. In Holliday's book, The Great Orm of Loch Ness, he recounts the description of the movie Mr. Dallas gave him. Mr. Dallas told me that this film runs for several minutes. Three humps, together with the neck and head, are clearly visible. The neck is held low over the water and seems to be writhing to and fro. During the sequence, a bird flies down and lands on a stone in the foreground, which helps to give scale to the picture. The orm's head appears to be bluntly conical in profile, rather like half a rugger ball, to quote Mr. Dallas. On the crest of the head are two horn-like sense organs. Starting between these, and running down the neck, is a bristly mane. Mr. Dallas said this mane reminded him of a baleen. It is stiff yet flexible, and the texture seems to be fibrous rather than hairy. Slit-like eyes can be made out on the head, but they are not very distinct. Occasionally, the animal rolls in the water, and one of the forward flippers makes an appearance. It is thick and fleshy in section, and seems to be capable of independent movement. The skin looks tough and leathery. Another interesting feature is the fact that the head seems to be in a state of continuous flux or movement, apparently due to the play of muscles under the skin. The second film, which was also taken by Dr. McRae, shows a creature lying in Loch Duitch, a sea loch on the Scottish west coast. The monster is lying against the shore and is writhing its neck over a bed of seaweed. It differs from the Loch Ness specimen in having a longer neck and a mane that looks tufted. A man appears in the picture during this sequence, probably in the background. This would undoubtedly be one of the best videos of the Loch Ness monster, however there was a complication. Dr. McRae didn't think there was enough serious attention for the monster, and decided to leave the movie in the hands of three different people, one of them being Dallas. Because Dallas refused to give him the footage since McRae stated not to in their agreement, Holiday sought out the two other people. While he never mentions who the third person is out of respect for that person's privacy, he stated that the second person, Sir Donald Cameron, denied having it. With no further leads, Holiday abandoned searching for the film.
Decades later, researchers Mike Dash and Paul Harrison decided to try and track down Dr. McRae. While they found out that the doctor had died in 1948, they did find his relatives. One relative remembered it being a photo, but did confirm that she'd heard about it. In their research, they found a later interview with Dallas, this time conducted by Alan Wilkins. Wilkins claims Dallas told him that Holiday's account of the film wasn't accurate. According to him, there was only ever one film taken at Loch Duitch. Holiday's description of the film was actually a description of a sighting Dallas had in 1936, not what happens in the film. Dallas also made a drawing of the creature. It should also be noted that Dallas's son claims his father had a penchant for tall tales, and likely made the whole thing up. On the other hand, Holiday apparently had independent confirmation outside of Dallas that there were two films. Additionally, the Loch Ness Mystery Blog was able to find a setting from 1934 that was similar to Holiday's description of the creature. Ultimately, unless one of the people entrusted with the film ever decides to release it, the mystery of the McRae film will continue. During the early morning of a 1934 expedition to Loch Ness, Captain James Fraser allegedly took a video of a 10 to 20 foot or 3 to 6 meter long animal in the water. He described the encounter as follows. I observed what I thought was a rock about 100 yards from the shore east of the Urquhart Bay. I then took up my camera and trained it on the object and started to film it when, to my surprise, the object raised out of the water, either its head and neck, or a flipper, then lowered it, raising quite a volume of water, then it disappeared. Fraser showed this film to different scientific circles, and they generally concluded that while the film doesn't prove what the Loch Ness Monster is, it does seem to show that there's a new species in the Loch. Many of the scientists thought it was a type of seal. However, there were no sightings or reports of any seals around the year 1934 in the Loch. Lieutenant Commander Rupert Gold of the British Navy saw the film and concluded that the animal had a dorsal fin. Strangely, Gold also references a second film taken by Captain Fraser, but we don't have any further information on this film. There is a surviving image allegedly from the film that seems to show a dorsal fin, but without the footage itself it's difficult to tell for certain. Purchased from Ethiopia in 1904, the Rothschild Newville Tusk was a mysterious artifact of an unknown animal. While Ethiopia is no stranger to animals with tusks, this tusk was different from the tusks of local elephants. Shorter in length, the tusk was also darker and had strange, regularly spaced grooves running along the side of it. It was purchased in 1904 by a zoologist and baron who were traveling in eastern Africa, as it hadn't been bought by locals due to its unusual nature. After they purchased it, they consulted with Somalian hunters who told the men they believed it was from a hippo-like animal that sported downward-facing tusks. After being taken to Europe, the tusk was exhibited at scientific conventions and studied. After comparing the tusk to tusks from other animals like walruses and elephants, researchers concluded that it was from an unknown species. However, the tusk eventually disappeared, and despite the best effort of researchers, it hasn't been located yet. The Loch Ness Investigation Bureau was an organization dedicated to finding evidence for the creature. During their investigations, they took multiple videos of the lock. Unfortunately, many of these were taken on older equipment and weren't high quality. Most of the videos allegedly show wakes in the lock, and aren't great pieces of evidence. However, there was reportedly a video taken of a creature on the shore. Despite searches through the archives, the video has never been found, and the other videos taken by the Bureau haven't been widely shared yet. In the 1700s, biologist Nehemiah Grew catalogued some of the strange items at the Royal Society in London. Among those items was a piece of skin allegedly belonging to a seal. Strangely, the skin of this seal was said to have an extremely long neck that reached almost to the center of the seal's body, thus it was dubbed the long neck seal. Sometimes afterwards, the seal skin went missing, and although later sources mentioned the long neck seal as a real species, today it's regarded as a cryptid. In 1902, a couple in New Mexico received a pair of hairless cats. 
These cats were said to be of a breed from the Aztec Empire, and a bit smaller than normal cats. They were also said to be quicker and stronger than other cats. While in the modern day there aren't any reports of these cats, there were a few taxidermied specimens reported over the years, some in New Mexico and one in England. However, these specimens haven't been sighted in decades, leaving the mystery of the hairless cats unsolved. The moa was a large, flightless bird from New Zealand that went extinct sometime in the 15th century from overhunting. For centuries afterwards, however, there have been reports of the animals still being around. In 2007, a hiker in one of the more remote regions of New Zealand, Fiordland, reportedly took photos of the moa, both of the bird itself and its footprints. The photos were then sold at an auction, and as of yet, haven't been released to the public. During a 1966 expedition in the Deep Star 4000 submersible, two men spotted a strange fish in the darkness of the San Diego trough. According to them, the creature was very large, estimated at about 40 feet or 12 meters in length. It had large pectoral fins and a 4 foot or meter long tail. The skin was described as dark and mottled, with one of the men being certain it had scales. The encounter wasn't reported at first, since the men assumed they wouldn't be believed. When they did eventually tell their story, they mentioned that they recorded the audio of their encounter. This audio, along with any other information it might carry, is currently missing. Let's see what it is. Yeah. And there it was. And on first look, the video is like... John Eric Beckjord was a cryptozoologist who studied a variety of cryptids, including the Loch Ness Monster. John had interesting beliefs about the monster, and was open to them having supernatural powers. In 1983, he allegedly recorded three Nessies, who he nicknamed Faith, Hope, and Charity. According to him, they were about 15 to 30 feet or 5 to 10 meters long, and had cat-like shaped faces. According to one person who has allegedly seen the films, the creature is a paranormal slash supernatural wormhole traversing being that will never be caught nor killed, and we have a film that shows it coming from a space-time wormhole and going later. Despite this fantastical description, others who have seen the film describe it as looking more like a typical Loch Ness Monster video, somewhat grainy and showing an object in the water. However, the current location of Beckjord's video is unknown. The Nandi Bear is an African cryptid said to be a ferocious carnivore. There have been a variety of theories on what the Nandi Bear is, from a badger to a hyena to a type of ape. Specimens of at least three or four Nandi Bears, described as hyena-like in appearance, were shot in the years 1905, 1936, and 1961, and sent to the Natural History Museum. Another Nandi bear was later shot and preserved, however this time it was photographed as well. This photograph, and the specimen itself, were later examined and were going to be sent to the Natural History Museum, but they disappeared. At some point, the three other specimens also disappeared. The Cadborosaurus, or Caddy, is a sea serpent sighted off the western coast of North America. Over the years, there have been several specimens of the creature allegedly captured a 1930 skeleton encased in ice, and a baby caddy caught near De Kersey Island. Some have theorized that the skeleton was simply a whale. Unfortunately, there's no further information for either the skeleton or the baby caddy. In 1940, cryptozoologist Ivan Sanderson purchased a pair of strange, unidentified cat skins in Nayarit, Mexico. This cat skin was about four and a half feet or one and a half meters long and had a large neck ruff around the cat's ears. Before Sanderson could study the skins further, they were lost in a flood. Sanderson did state that he had seen a similar skin for sale earlier, so one could still be out there. In 1938, retired bank manager James Curry was searching for the Loch Ness Monster when he spotted something strange in the water. The creature had three humps, grayish-brown skin, and a triangular head. Curry then supposedly deposited this film in a vault, until the monster was taken more seriously. If this story sounds familiar to you, you aren't alone. The Curry film and the McRae film had so many similarities, Roland Watson investigated the two. 
He concluded that the Curry film was likely the McRae film, but under a different name. Watson thought that the name of the film was changed so that Mr. Dallas, of the McRae film story, wouldn't receive unwanted attention. The Enfield Horror was a bizarre cryptid sighted in 1973, known for its ability to jump extremely long distances. Like many cryptids, after the first sightings were reported, a bunch of people went to go hunt the creature. Unlike many cryptids, however, some claim to have captured audio of the monster. According to an article by Jerome Clark and Lauren Coleman, Coleman talked to some alleged witnesses who played a recording of the creature for him. It's described as a screeching, banshee-like sound. However, when I searched for the audio myself, I couldn't find it. Google turns up nothing, and I haven't found it anywhere else. I contacted Lauren Coleman about it, but haven't heard anything back yet. Lake Simcoe in Canada is allegedly the home of a cryptid named Ego Pogo. In 1991, after a cryptozoology talk show aired, a viewer reached out to one of the men on the show and asked him if he'd like to see a video of the creature. According to him, the video shows a man trying to repair his boat while on the lake. Suddenly, the Ego Pogo bursts out of the lake and examines the man only a short distance away from the boat. After a few tense moments, the creature begins to sink back down, before disappearing completely into the water. This video was later seen by cryptozoologist John Kirk, who had a background in marine life. He examined the video and concluded that the creature is likely a type of seal, around 9 to 12 feet or 3 to 4 meters long. As for the location of the video itself, the identity of the man who owns it isn't known, and besides the two other men who studied it, Nobody else is known to have seen the footage. Loch Morar, one of Scotland's larger lakes, is home to a lake cryptid known as the Morag. In 1981, a monster hunter named Signy Wignall claimed to have filmed two of these creatures. He described the video as showing the Morag swimming through the loch, leaving large wakes behind them. He also stated the film shows one of the Morags lying eerily still by the side of the loch. It was around 30 feet or 10 meters long, had a long pointed tail, and had three flippers, with a possible fourth being obscured in the video. Its neck was described as medium length and narrow towards the head of the creature. The video was allegedly going to be shown to Prince Charles, however it's unknown if that meeting ever happened, and the video went missing afterwards. Part of it was supposedly shown on a news program, However, this footage cannot be released due to copyright issues. During a search for a large, chimpanzee-like ape reportedly from Peru known as the Isnachi, zoologist Peter Hawking was informed of an interesting encounter by a botanist named Benigno Malo. Malo was collecting orchids in the forest when he spotted a large ape moving towards him. Before the ape disappeared, he took a photo of the creature which he described as a black chimpanzee. Since Malo thought it was likely an escaped circus animal, he didn't put too much thought into the photograph. Despite Hawking's best efforts, he was unable to get a copy of this photo, and it remains lost. In 1914, the Lao, a giant Sudanese fish, was allegedly caught by locals. The locals then turned the bones of the Lao into jewelry. To this day, neither the jewelry nor any trace of the Lao has been found. The Mapinguare is a South American cryptid described as being similar in appearance to the extinct giant sloth. During a 1994 expedition in the Kuritiana Reservation, Cryptozoologist David Oren recorded a call believed to have been from the Mapinguare. The call is described as being extremely strong and of steady pitch, lasting for up to 45 seconds and resembling jets flying over low. The location of this audio is currently unknown. On May 28, 1938, a man by the name of G.E. Taylor spotted an object in the lake, which he described as... Its body was large and rounded, 
with the tapering down to the neck which dipped under the water, becoming visible about 18 inches away, rising in an arc to about 6 inches above the water, before dipping again. Where this arched neck re-entered the water, it had every appearance one would associate with a head. The body showed about 1 feet above the water. Its color was very dark. After taking a video of the creature, Taylor left and told a woman about this encounter. Wanting to see it for herself, they went back to the spot of the creature, which by this point had moved closer to shore, allowing Taylor to see that it had a straw-like color. He took another video of the creature before leaving. The film wasn't shared for decades before it was sent to Maurice Burton, who analyzed it for his 1961 book, The Elusive Monster. Unfortunately, that's where the story of the film seems to end, as after that the film wasn't widely shared, and all we have today is a few images from it. The Jor is an Indian lizard cryptid which is said to be about twice as large as the Komodo dragon, and strong enough to hunt buffalo. According to a 1987 Bilk article titled Behemoth, the cryptid was allegedly photographed by a University of Tirpati researcher. It was estimated at about 5.5 meters or 18 feet in length. Despite this report, I couldn't find any trace of the photograph or a copy online anywhere. In 1963, a group fishing in Barnstable Harbor captured footage of a sea serpent. The serpent is described as having amber tufts of hair running down the back of its head, and having a blowhole. Unfortunately, we don't have any more information about the fishermen who captured the video, making it difficult to track down. A scientist of the French Institute of Oceania named Routier acquired a photograph of a sea serpent that was caught in the South China Sea. The serpent resembled a giraffe, having a long neck with black and yellow marks. This giraffe-like description is consistent with other reports of sea serpents in the area. Cryptozoologist Bernard Huvelmans looked into the photo, but wasn't able to find any instances of it being published anywhere. In 1975, a strange, mutant jaguar was shot in Paraguay. The creature was examined by zoologist Juan Akavar and found to have 12-inch or 30-centimeter long teeth. Juan theorized that the creature was a Smilodon or saber-toothed tiger, but labeled it a mutant jaguar instead so attention wouldn't be brought to the local residents. The location of the big cat's body is unknown. August 4th, 1990. A strange, diamond-shaped, unidentified flying object is spotted over Calvine, Scotland. It hovers there for about 10 minutes, before ascending upwards at very high speeds. According to partially declassified government documents on the incident, local hikers took color photos of the UFO. These were passed on to a nearby Royal Air Force base and the Scottish Daily Record, which is a newspaper. The photos allegedly show the diamond-shaped objects in the sky, and also two small Harrier-class planes flying nearby, despite government records claiming no Harriers were flying near the area that day. According to the government, they analyzed the photos before preparing a media statement and sending them back to the newspaper. According to other reports, however, they confiscated all copies of the photo and refused to release them. Regardless of who has them, you can't find the photos online. The full government file on the incident is due to be released January 1st, 2076, but the photos themselves aren't contained in the file. All we have are media recreations of the incident. In 2000, a Nagubu, a multi-horned Cameroonian cryptid resembling a rhino, was allegedly killed. Cryptozoologist Bill Gibbons was in the area and learned that the locals had eaten the animal and fed its bones to their dogs. It's said that the horns of the creature were sold to a group of French loggers in the area, but where the horns are now is unknown. The Dodu is a strange hominid cryptid from Africa, described as having three digits on its hands and feet, and feeding on maggots. Around the year 2000, a live Dodu was reportedly captured and displayed in the Molundu district of Cameroon. Bill Gibbons theorized that the men who captured it were also French loggers. Another Dodu was allegedly killed by a hunter near the Nagoku River, with the body being sold to a French logger. 
Both of these specimens have since disappeared. Cryptozoologist Dr. Carl Schuker once received a message about a mysterious photograph. According to the correspondent, somewhere on the internet was a photograph of a group of men standing around a dead saber-toothed cat. Unfortunately, details on this photograph are scarce. In the year 1849, an 8-foot or 2.5 meter tall orangutan was killed in Sumatra. This specimen was first sent to the Asiatic Society of Bengal for study. However, the society's collection was later absorbed into a new collection in Calcutta. Somewhere along the way, the orangutan specimen disappeared. Cryptozoologist Chad Arment theorized that it was sent to England. In his book, In Search of the Mokele Mbembe, author Michael Ballett recounted a story of a European man who allegedly shot an Amila Ntuka, which is an elephant-sized cryptid with a distinctive horn on its head. The cryptid was shot about a week's trek from Lidjambo, an area in the Central African Republic. Before the man buried the animal, he took a photograph of it. However, the location of this photograph is unknown. The man was likely poaching, which explains why he didn't share the animal's photograph. In Felipe Coudray's book, Guide to Hidden Animals, an anonymous U.S. Navy member reported an incident with an unidentified species of chimpanzee in the Congo. According to this individual, the incident took place sometime between 1997 and 2002. A U.S. military unit came across 13 chimpanzees with strange, porcupine-like quills sticking out of their backs. According to the sighting, these quills would stand up when the chimpanzee was agitated, and the chimps were hunting prey in the area. The source also claimed that the U.S. military shot a three-minute video of the chimpanzees that remains classified to this day. Besides this anonymous story, we have no other accounts of the footage. On the island of Borneo in 1846, Admiral Henry Keppel allegedly came across the hand and skull of a large, unknown species of orangutan. He described the hand as exceeding in length, breadth, and power, the hand of any man in the ship. And though smoked and shrunk, the circumference of the fingers is half as big again as an ordinary human finger. The skull and hand were sent to an unknown museum and disappeared. While near the Isle of Man, Major W. Pierre Groves and his family sighted a large sea serpent. From his vantage point on the boat, he described it as having huge eyes, a dog-like snout, and a head the size of a bull. He also said the creature looked very friendly. Cryptozoologist Bernard Huvelmans heard about the story and contacted Groves, who told them about the incident and sent him a sketch. Groves also stated that his sister snapped a low-quality photo of the serpent. Huvelmans asked for a copy of this photo, but never got one. In 1934, Yingkou, China, one of the strangest cryptozoological incidents ever occurred. According to the story, a nine-year-old girl and her father were traveling during a hot day when they came across a group of villagers gathered by something. The father picked up his daughter and they went for a closer look when, to their astonishment, they saw a dragon. It was described as grayish-white, with a square head, beard, and slightly reddish eyes. The dragon had two claws sticking out of its abdomen, and they found it curled up in the field. The creature's scales were said to radiate light, likely reflecting it from the hot sun. The dragon was in poor health, so the locals built a shed to protect it from the heat and sprinkled water on it. After a few days, rain came and the dragon disappeared. It later returned, damaging boats, destroying a house, and causing the death of about nine people. The creature was then seen thrashing about in the water, before disappearing into it. After a couple days of rain, and reports of villagers hearing a strange, cow-like noise, a local discovered a decomposing carcass resembling the dragon in the reeds. This local was said to come down with a strange illness afterwards. The body was transported and examined. They found scales, 
two horns on its head, and measured the creature at around 30 feet or 10 meters in length. Before it died, it supposedly dug a large hole beneath it, indicating that it was struggling. Despite fishermen being brought in to identify the body, they couldn't determine what it was, leading to many agreeing with the dragon theory. The body of the creature became lost during the Second World War, and while some photographs were taken, including allegedly the one shown here, it's likely many were lost as well. Many Chinese researchers have different theories on what the dragon was, from a stranded whale, to a quaternary wild horse, to a primitive cow, and even an elephant. Others online theorize that it was a porpoise, fossils disturbed by the storm, or the remains of an oarfish. The case received more attention in China when a 2004 documentary called Into Science covered the story and interviewed witnesses. One man turned in bones he believed to have been from the dragon, but these were discovered to be 10,000 year old fossilized bones from a horse. While the program concluded that the remains were likely that of a baleen whale, skeptics pointed out that the creature was said to have 28 joints, while a baleen whale has about 58 joints. Others pointed out that details about the dragon's appearance, like scales and claws, don't match up with the baleen whale. The dragon's skeleton, along with any further photographic evidence, remains missing. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, Please like, subscribe, and share it with someone you think may also enjoy it. I put a lot of time and effort into this video and it was very difficult to make, so I would really appreciate it if everyone spread it around. If you want to see more, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, which I'll link in the description. If you want to see more cryptid stuff, I'll have a playlist of my cryptid videos and the cryptid iceberg in the description as well. If you want to see exclusive content, including a cryptid map I've been working on and ad-free videos, you can follow me on Patreon. I also recently made a Discord, so I'm going to put a temporary link to it in the description. If you want to chat with me, see upcoming video previews and stuff like that, I highly suggest you join. If you have any leads on anything I mentioned in this video, please reach out to me either on Twitter, Patreon, Instagram, and the YouTube comments, or on Discord. I'd also like to thank everybody who helped me out with this video, both in suggestions and research. The editor of the Cryptid Archive wiki was a massive help, I'll put a link to the wiki in the description. Roland Martin of the Loch Ness Monster blog was also a major help. Once again, Kevin Gould of Thunderbirdphoto.com helped me out a lot, I highly suggest you visit both his YouTube page and his website, both of which I'll have linked in the description. Thank you to Dr. Carl Schuker, who runs a fantastic cryptozoology blog, J. A. Hernandez, who has a great online newsletter, Thor Longus, the late Scott Mardis, Enigma of Ears, Mirage HBI, PM Me Your Ears, Sweet Sassy, Dr. Herbert Wongus, Skulldog, Ashers, The Red-Eyed Alien, and 3F3FE. I really appreciate all their help in making this video, and I appreciate you watching it. Once again, I encourage you to check out the description. I'll have all the links to my cryptid videos, social media and discord, and the websites and channels of all the people who helped me out. That's all for this video. Thank you, and I will see you in the next one.